Hello and welcome to another episode of Moose's Gear Goo Review. I'm Moose and today I have a knife review and this one's pretty interesting. I don't typically do these but that is of the CRKT Provoke. The CRKT Provoke. So this is the CRKT Provoke. It is a karambit style knife and we will go over this and the specs. So, uh, this is the CRKT Provoke Kinematic Morphing Karambit uh, by Joe Caswell. He's the designer. Um, the overall length is 7.37 inches long. The blade length is 2.41 inches long. The blade width is 1 inch from cutting edge to the spine. And uh, the blade thickness is 0.2 inches thick. And yeah, so this is a very unique knife, something I typically do not go for. And I believe this is the first Karambit I have ever reviewed on the channel. And uh, yeah, so let's just take a quick look at this. It is a pretty awesome piece of engineering. And uh, yeah, so... Just like anything, this is designed by Joe Coswell. He's kind of a custom knife maker. There is a custom piece that's pretty much identical. Uh, there's some other comparison videos out there between his actual custom one. And I think he actually did like a Kickstarter to get this project funded. Um, and then with this one, they, they more or less find that besides the difference in blade steels and materials, um, it's more or less exactly the same. Uh, but that being said, uh, the blade steel on this is D2, and the handle material is machined aluminum, obviously with like stainless steel and stuff in there into the locks and whatnot. But, uh, so why did I grab this knife? I did because it's just really unique. So I was drawn to it mostly because of this kinematic opening system. Uh, I think that's the big key feature here because there's dozens of karambits that pretty much open the same way. But this whole ability to launch the blade out uh, is is kind of the big draw. Um, and boom, just like that. So it, it's pre pretty awesome. Oops, stuff's falling down. Uh, so you can kind of tell that this is a difficult one for me to talk about just because I've never handled a karambit really before as well as you know <laughs> What do I say? So I guess we'll start with the blade. So first off the blade is a hawkbill style blade It is a chisel grind with a secondary bevel so as you can see here so it's pretty much flat on the bottom side and then it's angled up top. So that's what makes it a chisel. Um, it does have this continuous curve around this, the, the spine of the blade uh, that makes it this hawk bill design with that curve, recurve there. But um, the blade itself then goes into this piece of tang back here. And uh, that tang then is connected to these two pivot arms and then that's what connects it to the handle. Uh, so those two pivot arms allow it for free sliding motion. Uh, and then it doesn't necessarily fold as much as um, ejects and re retracts. Uh, if I, I guess that's how I would describe it. Um, so once it's retracted in, it then is ejected out. So through those pivoting arms. So it's pretty cool. Um, it is coated, uh, I don't know, kind of in like a anodization, I'd say. Not really a part of coat. I don't know if, from the information that I'm reading from. Uh, but it is blacked out. Uh, it gives it a very tactical feel. This is a very tactical knife. And if you don't know, the Karambit was originally designed as a rice harvesting tool from South Asia. Um... So it's designed so that you could uh, grab a bundle of rife, rice and cut it, cut the roots or whatever, or any other vegetables or vegetation, but then you still had the ability to handle things without the knife falling off, and that's why there's the ring on it. Uh, but from there, it uh, 
then was worked into martial arts. Uh, and I'm not sure exactly the name of the, the martial arts, but it's been used in, in multiple martial arts at this point, even Krav Maga and um, Savat or something. I don't know. If I find any information, I'll, I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, but now it's, it's known as kind of a tactical fighting knife. And this just makes it even cooler because now you can uh, kind of conceal it in the palm if you need to. And then with just a push of your thumb, eject the blade. Uh, there is no real traction on the handle. It's a slight black matte finish. Uh, there are some finger grooves though. Uh, but as far as traction, having your finger in that hole is what really keeps it in, in your hand. Uh, and then there is some jimping on the actual deployment part there. So you'll push your thumb on there and that's what deploys the blade. So yeah, uh, the only other thing really besides this uh, hole here is the pocket clip and the lock. So we'll talk about the pocket clip now. It's a pretty unique pocket clip as well. Follows the, the lines of the handle and where you place your finger. Uh, there is some jimping up here to kind of designate where you need to push to leverage that pocket clip. So you really kind of have to push in hard. But then that leverages the pocket clip enough. Um, it does take a little bit of practice just because uh, the jeans material you might be wearing is a little thick. Um, but eventually you'll get it in there. And it actually slides in pretty nice and slides out. But if your pants are too thick, that's going to be kind of a challenge. Uh, other than that, the locking mechanism is this push button here. You're going to slide that, and that's what unlocks it. And it clicks over. And that's metal as well. So this is all metal. Feels really robust and rugged. Um, when I was using this, though, I realized that this is something that I would not EDC. Uh, just because it's really not a very functional knife for my everyday carry. Um, and even when I deploy it this way, I found that I don't cut things like this. I don't cut things with the bottom of my hand and trying to guide it. Um, so, so what I did find is if I hold it like this with my ring finger in the hole and have the blade on the upside... I can deploy it with my thumb still and I can do better draw cuts specifically for opening boxes otherwise I'll put it in here if I really need to try to carve anything um, but realistically this knife is not designed for utility cutting tasks this knife is purely designed for a tactical self-defense application where you are intending to uh, inflict enough damage so that you can be safe and the people around you can be safe. Um, honestly, that's what this is used for. This tool with this design, this chisel grind, isn't even designed, like it isn't even purposeful for harvesting uh, plants <laughs> because of the grind and, and everything. Um, this is purely a tactical self-defense tool and and it's kind of a talking piece. It's one of those unique things that you want to have in your collection because it's unique. It has a really cool deployment um, mechanism. And it uh, it's just super cool. Like, cool factor you know, like is off the charts. Fidget factor, it's pretty cool as well. I have figured out that I can well, I see, deploy it this way. And then unhook it and kind of handle it back in. It's not the easiest, but yeah, definitely a cool piece to handle and to show off. And if you're planning on just carrying a knife for intimidation factor, for whatever reason you're in an unsafe area and you want to carry something, um, you know, this might be potentially the tool you want. If you do choose to carry it for self-defense purposes i highly recommend you get in, you get trained uh in using crombits because it is a very different style of knife so yeah 
That being said, let's compare it to some other knives. I'll actually keep it closed initially. Um, so we'll do the Benchmade Griptilian. We have the Terminus XR. And heck, we'll throw in a Delica like this. Okay. So that's that there. And as you can see, knife wise, that's what it looks like when it's deployed. It's kind of hard because it curves, but the handle is fairly large and it's a smaller blade. It is very sharp at the tip though. Um, so pretty crazy sharp. I forgot to show you too. Anyways, there's the logo. Coswell design. CRKT. And it doesn't say D2 anywhere, but it is D2. So. Um, yeah, so there you have it. So blade thickness test. You can see how thick the blade stock is. Once again, blade stock is very thick. Handle is obviously thick. And the Delica just looks like a toothpick compared to it. So, yeah. Um, I will say because the blade stock is so thick and the me mechanism uses all these extra articulating arms, uh, it is a thicker carry. But I feel like most karambits aren't exactly the skinniest thing. Um, to carry in pocket uh, but this definitely is substantial the lockup's really good it feels rock solid and it feels like a very well built tactical tool so yeah that being said let's try it with the ugly brown glove of course so here we have it um, just overall texture wise not much texturing at all as far as grip um, but once you get that ring finger in there it's big enough to get my finger in there with this glove um you know obviously it's not going to fall off you can flip it around um and then deployment really easy to find that push off there and deploy it uh, definitely a two-hand closer but uh deploy it boom and you're in Oops. Whoa. There you go. Uh, so, yeah. Even with the glove, I can find the lock and, and undo it, which is cool. I do like how well the lock works. Um, so, very nice. Pocket clip-wise, I can press down and hopefully get something under there. Oh, here as well. Just to show you how it fits under or in the pants. Uh, that bit will stick out. But, boom. And I'll try to get a shot of it in the pocket for you. So, does it pass? Kind of. It's kind of a gray zone. If I wasn't using the ring, um, you can kind of hold on to the loop. And those, those choils help a little. Uh, I'd say it passes with the C. So, yeah. Does it pass? Yes. C. So, there you have it, guys. Very unique piece really more of a kind of novelty in a way unless you're really using it for tactical purposes or self-defense purposes um definitely a cool one though to have in the collection if you're looking for a unique knife uh, at the time of this video i think everywhere it's going for about 200 bucks um price wise you know for the unique design construction i think it's it's definitely worth it uh you might be able to find it a little bit cheaper if it goes on sale or anywhere, but uh, definitely one for a collection. Or if you're into tactile knives, you gotta probably get your hands on this. So, do recommend it for that purposes for EDC carry and general utility use. I do not recommend it. There's way better knives uh, for everyday utility use. So, keep that in mind. All right, guys, thank you so much. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the other videos over here. Uh, give me a, a thumbs up, hit that bell notification, share it, and I'll see you outside. Peace.